he's a preacher's preacher. And he loves the Lord. Amen. And he loves what he do. That's three things. And he's a friend of Pastor Juzak. Amen. After our music of meditation for the morning, the next voice you hear will be that of Pastor Clifford Balak. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Somebody could play from the same focus on this. <laughs> um, the individual was supposed to be special music this morning as well. But I didn't want to lay hands on him this morning. I don't want to burn the individual's out. Um, I was looking at some Bible text during my smile. <laughs> uh, am I smiling this morning? Yeah. 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 I'm thankful for that. Because <laughs> I have a very, very serious uh, disposition. For those of you who know me. <laughs> but my exterior doesn't always inform you of what's going on on the inside. <laughs> something I've lived with all my life. Yeah. And there are times where I just travel like everybody else. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm not false. Never have been. I usually speak my mind as mm -hmm. I think there was a preacher over here this morning who said something about, I think it was Abraham being true and t tells it as it is. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those kind of guys. Yeah. But a lot of people don't like mm -hmm. that kind of individual. <laughs> just lays it on, on the line. But um, a glad heart makes a cheerful face. But by sorrow of heart, the spirit is crushed. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. Um, yes. Um, a joyful heart is what? It's good medicine. Yes, 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 definitely so. Proverbs 15, 30, a glad heart makes what? Cheerful face, cheerful face. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, this kind of indirectly says it too, but the Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And then Psalms 119 states, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. There are about 50 50 Bible verses that deal with smile. <laughs> and you can look them up. I've just read a few. But um, I, always, I, I carried this song in um, this song in my back pocket this morning. Uh, even though I, I said to myself, you know, I'm just going to try and be quiet. <laughs> Not say anything. <laughs> but anyhow, I suppose the Lord is always impressing and leading. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I think the song will speak for itself. Amen. And as you go home, take a look at some of these Bible texts that Amen. make your face smile. Amen. If you can give me as much on this mic as you possibly can, you can. That would be a great help to me. <laughs>
Say amen. amen. Has the Lord smiled upon you, saints? Is he smiling on you now? Oh, give God praise because he is worthy to be praised. Thank you so much, Professor. This young man here was my music instructor at Oak Grove University. And I have learned quite a bit from him, and I thank you for the time we share together, Professor. I just want to give God thanks for Pastor Juzang, my, my co-laborer in the work of the Lord, for lending me his pulpit this morning to bring a word from the Lord for you, Trinity. I feel at home right now because I have seen some familiar faces out here. Grandma, uncle, my brother from another mother but the same father, Elder Finley, his dear wife, Lunette, Sister Johnson, Elder Woods from Scottsboro. You know, I feel at home. I feel at home, saints. I feel right at home. I, I'm just overwhelmed, and I thank Pastor Juzang again for letting me use his pulpit this morning. My dear wife, 10 years, thank you for standing by my side. As I matriculate through the halls of Oakwood University, ministerial theology, Bible worker, personal ministry director for State Line, just a, just a few things that the Lord has blessed me with. But there's one thing that I want to say. I love the Lord because he's been so good to me. I've come a mighty long way. And if you know my story, you see his glory. Amen? Let us pray. Father, in this little while, I just want you to hide me behind the shadow of your cross as I bring forth your word to your people. Holy Spirit, fall afresh upon me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. And may lives be touched and hearts be won to you. And I will give you all the credit and all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Turn your Bibles once again to Exodus 17, 1 through 8. A uh, pastor that I... Uh, uh, had the pleasure of working with Pastor Carlton P. Bird, always said, repetition deepens the impression. All right. Repetition deepens the impression. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Exodus 17, 8-16. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rapidian. Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. They took a stone, put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of his sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, for he said, because the Lord hath sworn that God, that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. This little bit 
time we have with each other. This is entitled Praying in Times of Crisis. Praying in Times of Crisis. As we look in the world around us, do we need prayer, brothers and sisters? Oh, I say yes. We need it now more than anything because we are living in a world of darkness and the world is upside down. But we have a God that will wreck this ship because he was the victor. And we know that the devil knows he has for a short time. And we have to remember one thing, brothers and sisters. The battle is fought and won on our knees. Amen? Amen. Exodus is about the God who makes himself known first to Moses, then to Pharaoh, then the Egyptians, and now to the nation of Israel. We've been following Israel as they make their journey from the Red Sea in Exodus 14 to the book of Mount Sinai, Exodus 19. We've seen a new lesson at each stage of his journey. These lessons often need to be repeated and reinforced, for like many of us, the Israelites were slow to learn and quick to forget. We are spiritual Israel, brothers and sisters, because we have a tendency to forget what God has done for you and for me. Amen? The Israelites were at Rapidium when, he came, when we come to Exodus 17. But at the end of the chapter, the place was renamed Messiah Mariba, testing while in Carlsberg. They're still there. And for the first time since crossing the Red Sea, they face opposition from without instead of within. Might there be a lesson for us there? Though the church of Jesus Christ will have opposition from without, the first obstacle we face is our own hardness of heart. Are you following me, saints? The biggest threat to the church in any generation is not the government. No, no. Some other religion? Mm -mm. Or enemies of faith? No. But us. It is our own waywardness, wandering, and hard-heartedness our love affair with 